The font matrix is a different way of looking at typefaces. Knowing about it would have saved me a lot of time. So in this video, I'll explain to you what the font matrix is, how you can use it to describe typefaces better and how you can apply it in your work as a designer for finding better font pairs. Because when pairing fonts, a common advice is to mix a sans and a serif typeface. But does this really always work? For example, when you look at Source Sans or Helvetica or Futura, all sans serif typefaces. All the same though? Not really. On the other hand, Garamond, Bodoni and Memphis are all serif typefaces. And again, they feel very different. But what if I told you that serifs are not the crucial part here, that there is a way that you can see beneath the superficial, that Budoni and Helvetica are actually related on a much deeper level and therefore would make a great match. Two simple and two complicated type categories have been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Do you want to know what it is? is the font matrix is everywhere but you'll have to see for yourself you take the blue pill and the story ends you wake up in your bed and you see in fonts whatever you want to see you take the red pill and you'll stay in wonderland and i'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes Wow, that was intense. But now back to the font matrix. This is a concept from Indra Kupferschmidt and when I finally understood it, it really opened my eyes and I want this for you as well. Brace yourself to leave all the magical, mysterious guessing of type combinations behind and finally have clearance. And stay until the end of this video to find out what a humanist sans serif is without all this art historic stuff. So, ready to take the red pill? Then welcome to Pimp My Type. Hello and welcome typography enthusiasts. My name is Oliver Schöndorfer, here to help you get the most out of your digital design project when it comes to typography. And if you're into type, consider subscribing to my newsletter where I send out one font recommendation each Friday and also subscribe to this channel. As Indra Kupferschmidt, the person that is behind all of this said, I think it's a super cool thing and should be connected with positivity and it's, uh, it is a great adventure to combine typeface and no one should be uh, afraid of it and everyone should go for it and use five different typefaces. I don't care. If, if they look interesting together, that's great. Typography police won't show up if you make a less than ideal combination. Everything's fine. But going for your gut feeling is not always that easy because the advice you find on the internet or in books is either very, very vague and fuzzy or just misguiding. Why should I want to combine one sans serif typeface with another one? With gigantic font catalogs already existing and new ones coming out each day, it's also very hard to pick a typeface. And this is where categorization or grouping typefaces together comes into play. Very broad categorizations like sans serif and handwritten are a very good starting point, but they still leave you with too many options. On the other hand, historic classifications are very dated and they are little practical. It seems to me they are more rooted in art history than helping you making a decision. Why is Bodoni from the 1780s considered as modern and Times New Roman from 1931 considered as old style? And here's Indra. The biggest problem is terminology and not really the groups that we're dealing with because yeah, they, they, are, they are very flexible and can be assembled on the fly uh, according to keywords that you attach to them. But how do you call this box with a garment now? 
Indra's approach is a three-layered system when describing a typeface, with the first layer being the skeleton, the second layer being the flesh and the third layer being the skin. This might seem a bit complicated at first glance, but bear with me because this is very, very brilliant and will evolve into something beautiful. The first of the three layers, which is the form model. And within it, there are three kinds of shapes you can find in letters. You have a dynamic, a rational, and a geometric form model. The dynamic model has a slight angle, as you can see it here. In the middle, the rational form model, this has vertical stress, which means the strokes expand to the side. And the third form model is seemingly monolinear. The same form model still exists when you remove the serifs and you only see it in sans serif style. It's not that easy to see, but you can kind of feel it. But besides the contrast and the angle, there is another thing you really should pay attention to, and this is how open or closed the shapes are. The dynamic form model has open shapes. You can see the aperture of the A is open. The rational shape has a closed aperture. And the geometric one is very constructed from its letter shape, like with a circle. Is circle some, is, what is circle of English? We see this even clearer when we spell out a word. And I always use the word megatypos. You know how many typos are in my content. The dynamic form model shows here with the open apertures and the slightly angled diagonal stress. This is where we can also attach some adjectives to these kinds of shapes, which would be then friendly, open, approachable, something that's also making it easier for you to choose a typeface that should convey these feelings. Moving to the rational form model, we look at the E or the A. These are closed shapes and this creates a rational, orderly, maybe reserved or noble feeling. And finally, the geometric form model, very, very constructed. And this might create a clean, modern and simple appearance. Moving on to the next layer, the flesh. The contrast and the serifs. Is it contrasting or is it not? Has it serif or has it no serifs? Has it serif? Before we had our dynamic, linear, sans serif. And now when we add some contrast and serifs, the open apertures are still there, the diagonal stress now clearly shows, you still have the same feeling of being open, human, friendly, but maybe it's more traditional serif style. It changes the atmosphere, but not totally. Going now to our rational sans serif, which was Helvetica, and adding some contrast and serifs, what we get is Bodoni. Ah. The form model is still closed and strict and the contrast is very, very extreme, very high contrast. But from the bare bones, it's the same typeface. And when we have our geometric linear sans serif and we add contrast and serifs there, we get something that seems different, but still is geometric. And now everything starts to align. Moving from geometric to rational to dynamic, you can see how the font matrix appears in front of your eyes. And now here's the practical part. It makes obvious that not the serifs are the thing that defines a typeface. It's more the form model. And this makes it interesting for you when you want to combine typefaces. Just stay within one column if you want a same kind of structure. And of course, this is just the starting point. You will always have to consider, does it fit your project? How are the proportions? How is the excite? How close will you combine it? So on and so on. But it's a better guideline than just saying sans and serif. And you can always go for contrast. So maybe something with a different form model and a different flesh upon it. So this will make a good combination as well because it's contrasting. When the columns are close together though, ah, you will have to think about if this is really such a good combination. But what you really, really should avoid is choosing typefaces that are in one row. And this is serious here because on a superficial level, they seem very similar, but they are not 
close to each other when it comes to their form model. This is just irritating. Don't do it. Coming back to the various sans and serif typefaces from the beginning. Now you should be able to see their form model and have a hint if they are good matches based on their construction. So here's my challenge for you. I want you to go out into the wild, look on posters, signs, whatever, and find each form model, the dynamic, the rational and the geometric one. And maybe just post it on social media, Twitter or Instagram and tag me if you want to. So let's just see how this looks. That's irrational. That's a dynamic one. See the E, the open E, and the angle here. And what do we have here? Geometry! Yes! Jackboard, we found them all! And I think it's a fun game to change your perception to make things more interesting and visual. So once you have seen this, you cannot unsee it. And it shows you that beneath it all, that there are differences and you shouldn't be distracted by the serifs. Here's Indra again. These principles can also be seen regardless of if it's a sans serif typeface, if it has thick serifs or no serifs, or if it's thin or bold, and um, gets us a little bit away from this track of history. If you want to find out more why Indra developed this system, Listen to the whole conversation. I link it below and here. But one thing is still missing and that's the skin. Which is describing the finer differentiations. How these serifs are shaped, like in this case bracketed and very subtle. Or if it has a certain decorative feature like a stencil style. Or maybe if it's an inline style, rough or vintage, you can add any tag to it that describes it better. Makes it so much easier to describe what you're looking for, what you want, what interests you. And what fits to your project, doesn't it? There's so much more to say about the font matrix and how you can apply it. And this is why I created an online course that focuses only on that. This online course is made to fit into your daily practice as a designer. Because let's be honest, the real challenges are not I combine a script typeface with a sans serif. This is an easy way to make a combination. The hard stuff is when something is required and you have to find something that's similar but works for larger sizes or smaller sizes. And this is where the font matrix can help you make a better, faster decision. With a lot of practical examples, I can show you how to pair typefaces like a pro. And if you're interested in that, I would love to see you in the workshop. All right, but now let's get back to it and answer the final question. What actually is this kind of humanist sans serif? Humanist shapes would be the dynamic shapes we've seen before in the form model and sans serif is just without serifs. So what defines a humanist shape? All the things that define our dynamic form model like open shapes, slight angle. Now you have a way to spot these kinds of typefaces. Easy! After all this stuff, please bear in mind that this is not a perfect system. And even Indra Kupferschmidt says, you should not see this as a straight jacket. See it as something that enhances your visual perception, something that will help you make a decision. Eventually, don't forget to have fun with this and to discover and to try things out. Don't try to put everything into the matrix because you will soon find out that not everything fits exactly into one place, but overall it will help you to see things differently. Tell me in the comments below how you feel about this. Play around, discover, evolve, hit that red button that says in terribly spaced all caps letters, subscribe and see you in the next one. <laughs> this video took me so long, it was just insane. And recording it was crazy as well. I poured some, some, uh, 
some bad milk into the water with some flaky things in there to make the, the water a bit more murky. <laughs> and then when I was underwater, it got into my nose and then oh, it was just horrible, like throwing up and everything. <laughs> Did it all for you. <laughs> I went a long way all for you. <coughs> 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 <coughs>